We had so much problems with this office and the past and, and all that kind of stuff. It's the first time I see from outside looking in as a frontline expert too. <laughs> going to jail and doing the things that these boys and these, these women of them do. Mm. They have a chance to do it right. It has been 36 days today, and before our recent trip to Maui, this past week and I have been up there for 28 days, and there are no words to describe the incredible experience this has been. When you place your hands and your bare feet into the soil, feel that warmth, you feel your heart. At 3 a.m. when you're sleeping in your ka'a and you feel her breath come down and sit on your bones, you know that she is alive. Her people had over a hundred different names for every type of wind. The clouds bow before her. It exists only in perfect harmony. And that is the true language of our people. In Aikana, we do not realize that when the hurricanes come and shake through East Hawaii, it is her that protects us before coming to our town. There is a Native American proverb that says, we do not inherit the land from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. What are we leaving behind for our kiki? What are you leaving behind for our kiki? <coughs> I know most of you do not reside on Moko Keawe, and you're supporting a decision that will affect our lives <coughs> and our future forever. Olava Mako Ika Pohaku, not Olava Mako Ika Telescope. <laughs> we have compromised and negotiated 13 times already, enough is enough. We talked about the educational factor and how it's such a huge concern. Bring these keikis up to the mama the open sky, the precious soil, our language spoken freely. There is no better classroom. Hearing our keiki sing, ole olelo, laugh on the mauna, there is no sound that is more beautiful. This is the rebuilding of our nation and the unification of our people. Several kupuna come to our mauna and tell us they have waited their whole lives for this. To know that they trust us enough to stand behind us, I have never felt more alive. We are making connections with nations all around the world who are fighting battles of their own. And we are still here. And we will always be here. April 7th, the day of the arrest, we stood arm in arm at the Pico, the last line. We sang Makalapua for our queen. We think about our queen every single day. The grace, the forgiveness, the aloha. There is not one day that has gone by that her name is not spoken of and the moment we made of the most profound of my life. The time is now, the power is you, to be an office of Hawaiian affairs for Hawaiians. It is crucial for you to be our kako, our support, money comes and goes, our aina is forever. Our kupuna are watching us, our kupuna are watching you. Please listen to your na'au and do the poem. Please support the sacredness of Mauna Kea and stop any more building. No kumu lahui, e haavi pao, a iho no mao, mahal.
So what has happened all this time here is, of course, the top of the pico has been drastically disturbed. And so there's, there's several things that's happening on top of the summit. There's, a, of course, the physical obstruction, destruction that has occurred. Because you, the, the leveling of the the cinder cones, the excavating down to the cinder cones to put the base of the telescope, all that has caused a physical destruction, desecration on top of the, the mountain. There's also an electro, electromagnetic disturbance on the mountain. To run those observatories, they have a large electrical current they have to bring up to the mountain, and that is also causing a disturbance on the mountain. And the other disturbance, they said, is, is from humans. When humans come up, humans can leave an imprint on the land. The imprint is, you either leave a good imprint or a not so good imprint. When I say your thoughts, the things you say, the way you come up, the things you do, not just on the mountain, but many places. What we do, we have to be mindful of the way we think, the way we talk, the things we do when we walk into these places, especially when we walk into Mauna Kea or the Lao And that's what they're sharing. And when I say they, There's many, like I said, there's many divine ones on the Mauna, but the one who first came to us, and that's how we got into this, into the cases and everything, into the, the hearings and everything regarding this project, was through Mo'inanea. Mo'inanea is a Mo'owaji. Mo'inanea is the guardian of Lake Waihau. Mo'inanea inherited that position of Kuliana from her mother. Mo'inanea in the, in the lake, there's also an essence of a, a, a female essence that is white out. So Moe Nania has shared these stories as well as others on the mountain. When we've been on the mountain, whether in ceremony and prayer, or just being there, and met, just in quietness and receiving, or whether we're here. And Moe Nania has, has actually, there's a place here in Waimea called Manaua, where Manaua is another Mo'owakini. And she, when the Mania came to Waimea, and she asked us, could we, could we help? And of course, all people say no. She said, could you help stop what is happening? So this is Mo in Mania. She's actually part Mo'o, part Kanaka. And, and she and many others have shared things on the mountain with us and others, not just us, many, many others. So, the context is that when we say the mountain is sacred, there's many other reasons why the mountain is sacred. We're just sharing one other reason, one other aspect of what has to do with the mountain. But you know, in, deep in our, in our na'au, in our DNA, we know the mountain is sacred. That we know the mountain is our pico. It's not just a pico for Kanak, it's a pico for everyone. And that's why we're here to protect our people. 
first thing we learn from our kupuna is that there are things that you have to compromise, but there are things that you must never compromise. So knowing the difference between the two is the trick. So in this case, my personal position is you get all of those telescopes off of the mountain. That's just my personal um, position because like Kahoolawe, in the military took it and they misused it. And the same has happened on Monarchy. On the Hawaiian world, so much aloha, they allowed it to happen. And now they misuse it to the point where they need to get all of those telescopes off of Monarchy. It's a matter of principle that we get all of those telescopes off of Monarchy. Can you compromise? Can I visit your grandma and can I operate on her? Can I do surgery on your grandma for the benefit of humanity, for my further exploration? Like that is what you ask me when you ask me, is there compromise? You know, can I operate on her for the benefit of everybody else? But then after I ask you, will I actually listen to what you have to say? That is what compromise means to me when I keep hearing this word compromise being thrown around. She is our mother. Literally, when you look at that mountain, you don't need to have that ancestral relationship. If you have somebody in your life that you love, that you would do anything to protect, that is what we are doing. It is not a foreign concept. It is not new. It is a continuation of everything that each of our elders in this room have probably done in their lifetime. And in my last Manao, I'm just going to say, I was, with one of, I was one of the 31 arrestees that were arrested. And I will say this, that my compromise, my compromise is no TMT, no telescope, no further desecration of Mauna Awa Kia. And we had $250 bill charged to us. It will be $1,000 the second time. But I'm telling you folks, I will die for that mountain. I will stand for that mountain. I will live the rest of my life in jail for that mountain. Mahalo. Stand with us. We act with integrity and truthfulness. Let's act together with integrity and truthfulness to protect Mauna Kea. It's all here. All in your strategic plan. Everything you need to justify your, your support for our ohana and that, on that Mauna who's been there for a month, a month at 9,000 feet, freezing temperatures, cakey, Kupuna, with absolutely no support from OHA. One month, no support from OHA. One of the things that have allowed us to stay here for so long is uh, it's a kanavai, it's a kapu that we put in place called the Kapu Aloha. And, um, and it's a kapu that, that keeps all of us in the right mind, in the right spirit, in the right lavena, as far as how we conduct ourselves, how we handle ourselves, how we communicate with each other, and really more importantly, how we communicate with those who are not here. Those who are not standing with us in, in opposition to the building of this, uh, this monstrous atrocity of a, of a telescope. Two stories down, 18 stories high, 34,000 square feet, uh, eight acre footprint. Yeah, the size of Aloha Stadium, just much higher. And, and we've, we've, we've stood here in clear opposition to many of these, to these powers, the state, the university, the DLNR, and the TMT itself, and they still have not found a way to get us out of here. And so one thing that we want to do, because we understand that, we understand that uh, this is not, this is by no means the first battle, and this is by no means the last battle. This is just a part of the process. And so what we want to do in a time where the whole world is watching us. We want to attack not the fruit, not the branches, not the laut, but the kumu and the a'a. And we believe that the source of all of these pilikia, in my mind at least, is the prolonged and illegal occupation of Hawaii by the United States of America. The fact that those of us who are connected to this aina, who come, physically come from this aina, are not able to determine for ourselves what is Pono and what is Heva. And that we have those people, we have people in charge who have no connection, who have never ever been to this Mauna, never been to the VQ, never felt the cold, never breathed it, never drank the waters of Wayo. And they can tell us what's Pono and what's Heva. And for me personally, I will never accept that. I will never accept someone with no connection, no physical connection to our island. 
that we're all on the same page on that one. E ta hopo atane, e ta mauliola, e ola hoi o mauliola, e ola ya oe tane tu me lono, oya, ho oya, e ola. E ya Hawaii, he moku, he kanaka, he kanaka Hawaii, e he kanaka Hawaii, he kamanaka hiki e puari i mai tapa ahu, mai mua ula nui a kea kanaloa. E ya Hawaii, he moku. He kanaka. E ya Hawaii, he moku, he kanaka. E ya Hawaii, he moku, he kanaka. As a kupuna taught us, the land itself, that's us. We are this place. This place is us. So we start with these lessons from our kupuna. And before I go on, I just need, I'd like to request that in the future, because this is such a huge issue, that testimony be allowed to come in from the islands outside of Oahu. Many of my brothers and sisters out there are shot out of this process. So I hope Oha finds a way in which we can have testimonies coming from the other islands. No consent, no treaty, no title, no TMT. No consent, is that true? No treaty, no title, no TMT. It's really that simple. Yes, it is. And I challenge anyone here to show me different by any evidence what I just said as being false. You see, we're in time of enlightenment for our people. We have reawakened. Eya mai Hawaii nuiakia. Eya mai loko mai kapo. Eya mai Hawaii nuiakia. We have risen. We have awakened. We have remembered, and we're going to restore ourselves as the people of this land. And I just want to make sure I support Mauna Kea. I support this Aina. I support our Lahui. I support our right as a people in this land to define ourselves, to provide ourselves self-determination, to determine our future, to tell our history, to speak our language, to have our place in the sun in this world. And that kuleana belongs to us as the people of this land. And how dare anybody else somehow assume they have the right to decide for us our history, our language, our place, and our sacred sites. See, that smells of supremacy. And that's what it is. Let's tell the truth. For those who want to dehumanize us and treat us as if we are not a real people, as if our history is not true, as if we provided some kind of consent, as if somehow they've inherited the title of that mountain. Those are all false statements. See, the truth is the young up there on that mountain, they know all of this. The truth is so powerful. It leads people to do what is necessary to take the steps in the future so we can reclaim ourselves as the Uivi, as the Kanaka, as the Maoli, Okeyapai Aina. As the great George Helm said, the modern prophet of Aloha Aina, and George Helm said, call me a radical, for I refuse to remain idle and allow the foreigner to prostitute the soul of my being, my culture. So call me whatever you may. But Aloha Aina is an ideology of love. Love for this place, love for our Lahue, and love for a fellow man. The great Gandhi himself even said, one of the seven sins is science without humanity. No. Science, how can you dehumanize us and call yourself scientists? Is it our mountain or not? No. Either we're human beings or we're not. Either we have a place to decide for ourselves what is sacred, or we don't. It's that simple as a question. But if you're going to deny that to our people, I'm saddened. I'm hurt. And I hope 
that in your hearts one day you will see the Hawaiian people as a real people in this land. True people deserving human rights as a people to define and decide for ourselves our destiny. And I hope that occurs. And always the, the, the power of love and truth will make this occur. See, Mauna Kea today is an example of this conflict. Our humanity versus this dishumanization. And I know it's my time, so I'm going to jump to my very end. <laughs> and let me just end with this quote. Related for the ATST on Maui. That's the solar telescope. Mm. On the head of the solar observatory, came to our school about eight years ago. And I said right across him. And I asked this person, his name is Craig Foltz, Craig Foltz, Craig Foltz, <laughs> National Science Foundation. And I asked him directly, what is the humanity of this project? You tell me as a Hawaiian. You know, I can take the pain. I can bleed if you're going to save some lives. Tell me what it is. And I asked him, what is your, what is the humanity? And he looked me directly in my eyes and he just said, oh, it's just pure selfish research. That's the honest truth. Pure selfish research. See, that's how they see us. So, in the end, as the great Gandhi had said also, the power of love and truth, the power in love and truth are the most powerful philosophies we can follow. And he said, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, and then you win. Mahalo. with purpose. Everything we do will be with purpose. 12 o'clock, we should be done with that ahu up there. So move with purpose, but be safe. You gotta look. Look, I, Daniel son. Look at that pohaku. Follow that pohaku from your hands, from your neighbor's hands, from your friend's hands, to your hands, to the next person. We're trying not to drop any pohaku. It, it'd be dangerous if it falls on anybody's, um, anybody's feet. So safety when you're passing, is just following that pohaku with your eyes, adding your mana to each pohaku that you pass. Okay, just to update you guys of what's going on outside of what we're doing today. Um, okay, so in the past 24 hours, yesterday, Kauai put up, they, they're making one ahu right now, same time as us. On, on Maui, everybody getting ready for go up to Haleakala, to Kule on their ahu, same time as us. So we all trying to finish at the same time, so that when we pull it, the Kapiko Wakea, no come on our care. We are causing that vibration good to all our islands supporting Mauna Kea right now. So just so you guys know and so you guys hear what else is going on, what else is pushing on the sides of us for one sauce. Eh? When we get out of Pohaku over there, everybody when we start piling up around the Ahu as we're building, we're gonna try this one stuff. We want silence until we finish the Ahu. Okay? Come around, pull it, give you positive mana. Until we finish that last cap, um, then we'll have the next stuff going around. If we can get that much of us silent lettuce to focus all the energy on that pohaku for that mauna, it's going to be that much more heavy. Get them. Can. Did you know? Yo, here we go. Two last things. Kapu aloha. Yeah. And one more thing. Try think of the class we, we hardly, hardly planning. We love pohaku. But we always think, when was the last time something like this ever happened? Yeah, you had at least a thousand people, Hali Hali in Kwaku. It's been a while. So, make a move, Connex. <laughs> so now we have Katie. We're growing up from the from Ba Pepe. Understanding the truth. And we're not spending our life trying to relearn things. We're learning it at the right time. We're growing up with it. And we get to a point where we are strong enough and confident enough that we're willing to take a stand for it. So in everything that we do, we need to explain the culture. We need to explain the tradition. We need to explain our genealogical and our physical connection to this place. But we also need to address the kumu of the pilikia. Yeah, we need to non-naike kumu. And the kumu of the pilikia is is these powers not allowing us to govern and to determine what's best for our people and for our people. Okay, we got that.
Another nice cook. Yeah. We come from a people we know. Captain Cook came here in 1778 and could not believe the cleanliness, the productivity of our Aina. He'd been all over the world already, yeah, discovering places. And, and he could not believe <laughs> the productivity of our Aina. And we're in a time now where Hurricane Anna comes, and people flipping out because we only get one two week shelf stock or whatever of mea ai and of resources. But we know back in, in the old, in the ancient times that white people alone in Bavi in times of famine could feed all of Hawaii, Mokukuni and parts of Maui. Just one valley. Not even looking at the 800 fish ponds we had across the Pai Aina. Not even looking at the valleys running up and down the Aina of Oahu and Molokai and Kauai and other places in Maui. And the, the dry land, the dry land systems that we had in Kona. So we need to get back to that. And I, so I, for us, we want to use this time, use this opportunity, use this platform that has never been greater for our people to let the world know that we know the truth. And we're going to start speaking the truth. And the rest of the world needs to speak the truth as well. And so again, for me, um, it, it, you know, pākana'au, yeah, that is, is, this is no longer just a one generation thing, a, a young person thing, you know, the, the older person thing. This is everybody. This is the La Hui. And in many senses, this is the Honua. And so people around the world face similar, uh, similar dilemmas, similar pilikia that we face in terms of managing our resources, managing our aina, managing and preserving the culture and the traditions of our people. And so we can use this time also to, to connect with them. And, and for us, you know, I wanted to say that because we've, we've been given so much support throughout the world, that we need to maka'ala too. And when other peoples face pilikia, that we need to be able to support them as well. Yeah. Yeah, because they are supporting us. And the more, the, the more connections we can make, the more connections we can create, the stronger we will become as a people. And not just Kanaka Hawaii, but as a people in general. And all people... No matter where you come from, no matter where you live in Hawaii, we need to have mahalo, we need to have ho'ihi, we need to malama, the resources that sustain us, that have sustained us for a thousand generations and will sustain us for a thousand generations more.